Hey everybody, as I was finishing out my sheep area, I realized that there was kind of a really time-saving tool that I wish I had known about when I first started modding. I actually only found out about it like a year ago, but, uh, well, let's just get into show you what it is. So the way that I make my map is I typically make the, I do the painting first. So I do all of this one first. I don't worry about any textures until the end. And I will show you why you might want to consider doing that. And like I said, I did not know about this until just like a year ago. I wish I'd known about it like three or four years ago. Anyway, the tool is... Well, let's, let's just say here, for example, I only want grass on this green spot. I don't want grass on the rocks. I don't want grass on the road and I don't want grass, well, on the gravel. So let's, uh, get up here. Let, yeah, let's look this way. So one thing that you can do is, and the reason why you paint it first is, and this needs a little bit of smoothing and uh, some trees, but anyway, I'm not totally finished and ready to do this step, but I did it over there for my sheep. And while I was doing that, I, <laughs> I realized that maybe you guys would want this. Anyway, let's get into the tutorial. It's not really long or complicated. All you need to know is that when you go down here to foliage layer painting, so I painted everything under the red thing. Now I go over here to this button, the foliage layer painting. So let's say I want to paint grass. Now I only want grass on the texture layer of grass so the this refers to the little red brush and let's just uh, click this for example i'm not going to go over bit codes of the all of this stuff for now i should actually do that i'll, I'll cover that later it, it can be complicated but look what happens when i just left click to apply that texture it is only going where i have the grass texture and you can change this so that it will only go on solid so for, for 0.5 that's like half blended between grass and half of whatever else if i only had it at 0.1 for example let's go to somewhere where i might have it smooth out a little bit more and you can kind of see how well, let's just show you the exact difference. So that's 0.1 and 1. Now, this will only go where... Uh, so you can kind of see the difference. The 0.1, it's more blended. It goes in the more of that dirt area. The 1.0 only goes where we have the grass. So pay attention to this. You can kind of... It's set to 0.5 by default. But you can maneuver that as you want. And this is really great for painting entire sections. For example, I only wanted a forest texture in this forest layer over here. So... I selected the leaves and then I selected forest grass. And if it's not a growth crop that has growth stages, it will only have one bit, zero and, you know, so on and off essentially. And so all of my forest texture only got applied to the leaves. And since I carefully applied the, I painted the leaf layer wherever I wanted the, the forest to go, like where the trees were, I could you know i could basically do my brush all the way out here to like 500 and do this entire area and if you carefully apply the paint layers like for example you know this isn't really that careful but i'll run over here to my roads real quick so you can see maybe a slightly better example over here on the roads. yeah i still have to move that navigation mesh over here on the roads i did the same thing where i applied the grass layer to this entire side of the map and you can see that it gave it a little bit in some undesirable areas so for example i probably should have set the blend lower to this i i might have wanted to blend this only as like 0.3 or something because this is like a cliff face i don't want that to okay so let's uh yeah we're not leaves and we have to select grass so I, I wanted to, you know, I, I don't want it there. So you do have to go back and edit a little bit, but it sure as heck beats going back and editing every inch of every row to get the grass off of there. And then to put the grass wherever you want the grass, it just, it's a huge time saver. And like I said, it took me a long time to like, Hey, what's that little, what's that thing mean? I don't know if that's a new edition in this year's 7.0 editor or if that was there before, but like I said, I wish that I had seen that before and I do hope that that helps save you some time. One other thing that I will cover, let's say that, 
I've only used this, I don't think I've used this very much on making a new map. However, when I have upgraded a map from like my, when I was working on upgrading my map from, uh, my, my Tazewell County map from 15 to 17, FS15 to FS17, one of the things that you can do is you can, I, I had no idea this function was here. I had to do almost everything manually and then replant them all. You can do control W. This thing is really, really powerful. Now I got to remember, I'm not going to save anything here. So I I'll actually do this, but let's say I want every stage six pine tree replaced with, you know, this one, or I want all the stage three pine trees replaced. I want the forest to be dead, for example. So let's get rid of all these spruce trees. Whoops. I did the wrong one. Let's press on the tree that we want to the, the target. And no, 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 I, I had it right initially. So this is what we want the target. And then I want to replace it with this tree. Now I, this is if you don't want to, uh, so let's see how to explain this. If I don't check those, everything will get replaced with this. If I want to keep the original user attributes, then I can check some of those boxes. Let's uh, say keep clipping distances and replace all. Now you should see all of my pine trees. There we go. That's a perfect example of what you can do with this tool. The replace function is really, really powerful on a map. That's just one example of what you can use it for. And it is very, very powerful. That actually <laughs> looks cool, but I don't think I will do it on my map. Anyway, I, I, those are two really cool tools that I wish I would have known. They're huge time savers, just like the spline tool that you might not notice if you're brand new at mapping, but they can save you so much time. And, you know, anyway, I will stop rambling on for now. It's a really short tutorial. I will cover, let's see, what, what am I going to cover next? I don't know what I'm going to cover next. I am, I just finished this sheep area. And I think the next thing I'm going to do is, well, if you want a progress update, stick around, but this isn't a tutorial. The next thing I'm going to do is I think, no, I'm not going to finish my road. I'm going to go over here and I am going to start working on the farm because this is the train tracks. And this is what I've done so far. I have a nice little mountain path down here. This isn't totally finished, but I am going to change this. I'm either going to use this rickety bridge or kind of put a dam type area here with dirt and rocks, make it really rocky and hard to get across. So you can take this shortcut that's really, really hard. And then you have to climb back up this hill. So you're going to have to climb back up here slowly and then maybe snake back this way and then climb back up this way across the train tracks. And then you get to your farm or you can take this path that might actually be longer, but this is all going to be a forest that you can cut down. So it's going to be snaking through the forest here, but it's probably smoother and quicker to the farm. So those are the two ways that you're going to get to the farm. But the very first thing I need to do is I need to flesh out where this farm is going to go. I need to figure this out and I'm going to start laying out the farm. And then of course, some fields over here. There's actually not that much room for fields. So this might actually turn into a forest grassland map with I don't know. I We're going to have to make an area for a, some few fields. I think, you know, this is one of the things I, I preach this a lot, go into the game for checking errors, but you also go into the game because the scale, it's really, really hard, especially when it's flat and open like this. Like I might think, I, I don't know. I've seen areas like this where I think that it's, this is a really small field and I need to make all this one field. And then I get into the game and it was like, that is a huge field. Uh, what was I thinking? Why didn't I check the scale of that? And then I've had the exact opposite where it's like, ah, I think this is going to be a huge field. So let's break this into two small fields. And then you get into the game and it's like just stupid small. Like no field would ever be that, that small. Anyway, there are, there's, it's really hard to get the scale right in the game. It's, in the open space here when you have nothing next to it. So if you don't know a rough idea is just kind of paint the field texture on there and then get into the game and you get, get some perspective, I guess to, to conclude, I'll just cover real quick the terrain detail because this did change and it's not totally intuitive. If you want to paint some fields, I'll cover a field tutorial later, but I actually don't ever paint any terrain detail texture because, well, I'll explain that later in my, 
in my uh, field tutorial. The only ones that I do is which one is the grass? I forget which one is grass. One of these is a grass texture. Which bit code is it? Is it zero and two? There we go. Zero and two is this grass texture. And this is how you get on there and you can actually fertilize those fields. So if you paint this texture and then you set the field to unowned, and again, I'll get into the field later. But if you paint this and then go back and paint grass on top of it, this is that field texture that you get that can also be fertilized in your, in your, on your map. And there you go. So now you can get that fertilized field texture without making people plow up the grass fields. But I think based on the nature of this map, I actually rather like the idea of making it super, super hardcore on people and making them really, really work. And you got to plow up everything if you want to use it as a field or if you want to fertilize your grass fields. I, I kind of like the idea of not having any... Well, I don't know, but then it makes course play impossible. Well, this isn't really a course play map. Anyway, I don't know. I, I haven't really decided the direction of that yet, as you can see. I will try to find a link and paste all the bit codes. So if you do want to paint maze, for example, you will see maze. Okay, so I need these bit codes, and to get this growth stage, I need that. I don't know that that's the case. Don't look at what I'm actually doing, but there are specific check boxes that you need to check to get the right code to paint the right textures. And I will include that in the description link below. So check that out if you are to that stage. Like I said, I will cover fields later, but right now my next step, it's gonna, unless I think of something like this, it's probably gonna be a few days or maybe a week until I get another tutorial up because I'm gonna be just working around my farm and not really doing anything significant for now. I might do a section on silo triggers but I did kind of cover triggers when I moved the sheep around. And if you were paying attention, you should be able to figure out that yourself. But I think I probably will include a... Okay, so I take it back. I'll include a tutorial. Once I have my farm set up, I'll include a tutorial on silo triggers, making sure that you have all those set up for yourself. Anyway, I think that that concludes everything. Those That would be a very ugly map. Look at how depressing that map would look. That's just... I don't know. It's, it'd be interesting. It would certainly be interesting. It would certainly kind of give it the, I don't know, the dead overgrown. Well, that's not really overgrown. That's just dead. I don't know. But then over here, I'd have to mix in a lot of other tree types that can't just be all spruces or all pine, the, the dead pine tree. They were all spruces. Uh, anyway, I will stop talking for now. That concludes this little short tutorial. Anyway, I hope you find those tips helpful in your map making process. And like I said, if you are experienced, then you probably already know those things. But it took me a long time to figure that out. I'd, it was just a mistake. I was like, hey, what's this checkbox? You know, you get so into painting, you forget all these other little options and tools. Once you get set in your ways, even if it is a, a longer, harder process, it's like, well, I don't need to try anything else or figure anything else out because I already know the, the, uh, the, the process of how to paint and put textures on the map. And that's kind of the trap that I got into. And then I found out that this cool thing. And then I can't tell you how many textures I have replaced. And I wish I knew that control W function. So again, it's just control W. It brings up those two options and you can uh, hit it. So anyway, yeah, explore those features a little bit and then remember to always create backups, always go into the game and check your errors and make those backup copies in case you mess up something and accidentally save it. Anyway, I thank you all and goodbye. I hope you enjoyed and learned something.